Hi, I'm Technoporg, and I'm finally back with another update on Operis, my Windows to Linux migration tool. If you've never heard of it, I suggest watching the introduction video first, and then coming back here, just so you can get an idea of what this project is all about. We have a lot to cover today. The progress made since last time, how it actually works, open sourcing, and a planned shift in my relationship with the project. Before that though, I would just like to once again remind everyone that this is imperfect alpha quality software, and that unfortunately, we are not getting the year of the Linux desktop before GTA 6. Recent work has mainly been focused on technical improvements, documentation, testing, and everything else that's not glamorous, but is needed to both make progress in terms of features and scale up the number of contributors. The last video still had a bunch of hacks behind the scenes, like for one thing, this progress bar didn't actually measure progress, it was just a well-tuned mathematical function that increased over time because the file transfer was so janky and I needed to replace it anyways. But that's all been cleaned up now, and I think that what's left is a really solid foundation to build on as we move forward. With that being said, there are two flashy new things to highlight. And the first is that the infrastructure for program migration is now in place, and so I've gone ahead and implemented support for Chromium-based browsers with it. If Google Chrome or Microsoft Edge is installed on Windows, the user will get the native version installed on Linux, with all settings just seamlessly copied over and ready to go. I think the best explanation here is a demonstration, so uh, let's run a migration, you know the drill. I've also made some small tweaks to the user interface based on viewer feedback, but because the whole thing will need an overhaul eventually, the effort was admittedly a little half-hearted. Now, I am a one-trick pony, so if you watched the last video, you can probably guess what's going to happen next. Ta-da! We're back in Chrome! Adding support for other Chromium browsers is just a matter of adding some paths to a configuration file, while Firefox will unfortunately be more work. The other big important thing is that the way images are built has been decoupled from Kubuntu, and it should be pretty straightforward now to add support for other distros. I still believe that Kubuntu is the best choice and that an audience of Linux users will wildly overestimate how much this matters, but when the feedback is this strong, I'm happy to listen to it. The most exciting update to me is that Operis has been released as open source. Most of it is under the AGPL3 license, except a few utility crates which are dual licensed as MIT or Apache 2. You can find the code on Codeberg under the Operis organization, where I've done my best to kit it out in preparation for new contributors. So we've got bug reports, feature proposals, a contributors chat uh, on Zulip's awesome open source plan, and a lot of documentation. I can't wait to see more people joining the project, and all I ask is that you remember the human, remember that Codeberg is not a social media platform, and that you keep the truly enlightened conversations in the Pharaonix comments where they belong. Throughout all this, you might have been wondering how exactly one goes about replacing Windows with Linux in place and without a live USB. There are technical docs on Codeberg, but I'll do my best to give an approachable explanation here. The one technical concept you need to know is that of a partition. Partitions are non-overlapping sections of a hard drive, which are given to one operating system or another, and we want to replace the Windows partition with a Linux partition in the same place. When playing this game, there are a few key rules. Only the ends of the Windows and Linux file systems can change, so they can be shrunk or extended to your heart's content, but only in one direction. Uh, moving the start is never okay. And uh, secondly, the partition from which the OS is booted uh, can't be deleted, which makes sense. You know, you can't uh, take out a foundation from under yourself. The way I've chosen to get around these restrictions is to split the process up into three main stages, each of which have a distinct role. In the initial stage, it shrinks the end of the Windows file system and creates a new partition at the very end of the disk, to which it copies a Linux file system. It then generates a list of all the files, settings, and programs which need to be migrated, then restarts from Windows into the Linux uh, partition which was just created. Now that we're no longer booted from Windows, we have a lot more freedom to do what we want, which is to get Windows out of the way and put Linux there instead. While it is technically possible to move Windows over by just shifting all the bytes one at a time, that's a terrible idea, and only an idiot would do that in a demo video seen by over 89,000 people. So uh, since I did that, I've implemented a much better way. Remember when I said that you can only move the end of a file system? Well, that's not due to any hardware limitations. 
My guess is that the people who created early file systems were native speakers of languages with left-to-right writing systems, and so left-to-right was the way that seemed best to them. In this case, though, it's decidedly better to work from right to left, and so I wrote a custom file system, KCATS, which does just that. It starts right at the beginning of the intermediate partition, and then grows towards the start of the disk, and so files get taken out of Windows and put into the KCATS file system, which in computer science terms is just a stack. Finally, all the files will have been moved, and there's nothing at the start of the disk anymore, and so we can create the final partition, install Linux on it, and then reboot. After that, files get popped off the end of the KCAT stack and back into the final partition, a lot of settings get changed and programs get installed based on information generated in the initial stage, uh, and then Operis uninstalls itself and leaves you with a shiny new Linux desktop. I hope that makes some sense and clears things up a bit for those who are curious about the process. If you still have more questions, uh, the code's all there. Go take a look. There's obviously more going on behind the scenes and plenty of work left to be done in the future, but I expect that that core structure for the migration will remain the same going forward. This will be the last Operis update from me for a while, and there are two reasons for that. One is that progress will settle into something much more routine going forward, and blog post type updates will make much more sense. And the second is more personal. I plan on slashing the amount of programming in my life as soon as I can find a good home for Operis. I'm certainly not the most qualified steward for a big project, and to be blunt, I'd rather not waste these years of my life in front of a code editor when there are much more meaningful things out there. I'm deeply grateful for the time I've spent working on it, and the incredible support I've received from this community is something I'm going to treasure forever. But I think it's time for the next journey. For the next few weeks, I will be looking for a person or company to co-maintain it with me. If you're interested and have experience with Rust, Linux, and open source, please send me an email at hello at operis.com. I'll still be the primary maintainer until the sword is pulled from the stone, but after that, it won't just be mine anymore. I'll just be the low-budget Harry Seldon who first set the course and still occasionally makes contributions. I do plan to keep making YouTube content, though, as it's turned out to be something I really enjoy. Operis is something I've sunk countless hours of my life and more than a few dollars into. I realize that this isn't much of a value proposition, but if you'd like to retroactively donate for that, I would be deeply grateful. Anyways, thanks for watching, and enjoy Operis! I'll be back with more videos and maybe more technical content eventually, but for now, I'm going to go sit on the couch in the sun and read a book.